Rush's detention of WNBA player Brittany Griner has unleashed several stupid opinions from establishment media, but none are dumber than the continued complaints about the pay gap between the WNBA and the NBA. MSNBC decided that Griner's release was the perfect occasion to remind everyone that economic literacy is not a requirement to work at the outlet, re-upping a piece from March written by columnist Dave Zirin, who correctly noted that several WNBA players play overseas to supplement their league salaries. MSNBC calls this a maddening pay disparity, and Zirin wrote that WNBA players made a microcosmic fraction of what the men make. But if there is a pay disparity here, it is only because the NBA allows the WNBA to exist at all. According to NBA Commissioner Adam Silver, the WNBA has lost an average of $10 million every year since it was formed. The league generates just $60 million in revenue and does not run a profit. The NBA, for comparison, generates some $8 billion in revenue. The two leagues are not comparable in any way, other than they are both basketball leagues. The NBA is an entertainment juggernaut. Watched by millions across the country, people across the world know the names of the league's biggest stars. The average regular season NBA game pulls anywhere from 1.4 million to 3.03 million viewers, depending on the network it's aired on. In 2022, meanwhile, the WNBA set a viewership record, averaging 379,000 viewers per game. When Zyron describes how the league would need robust investment to close this gap, what he means is burning millions or billions of dollars. The leagues are just not similar in terms of athleticism. In fact, the gender gap is arguably greater than any other sport. If you were able to find team owners willing to burn their money out of the goodness of their hearts or male players willing to take huge pay cuts, then go for it. On second thought, they'll probably end up behaving just like the Russian oligarchs that WNBA players are already depending on overseas. American basketball star Kelsey Plum, who recently won the WNBA championship with the Las Vegas Aces after spending time with Galatasaray and Fenerbahce in Turkey, was a guest of the Residency Podcast. Plum shared her views on the big financial differences between the NBA and the WNBA. Referring to the income equality between the two organizations, she said female players were misunderstood about their demands. We're not asking to get paid what the men get paid. We are asking to get paid the same percentage of revenue shared. There's a big misunderstanding here. Let me be clear. I don't think I should make as much money as LeBron, but for example, in Mandalay Bay, they sell my jersey and I don't get a dime. Several former WNBA players have often chosen to play overseas during the offseason for additional pay. Overseas, players' salaries could exceed seven figures, something that does not happen in the WNBA. For the upcoming 2023 season, WNBA salaries will range from $62,285 to $234,936, according to a recent story published in The Athletic. NBA players currently receive approximately 50% of shared revenue, while WNBA players receive only 20% of it. In the NBA, um, they have percentages of revenue shared for the players, right? right. So jersey yeah. sales, obviously their TV contracts, you see these every year, these contracts get bigger and bigger and bigger, right? Yeah, massive. But but that's because their CBA it negotiates where the, you know, if the owners are making certain types of money, they get that as well. Got it. In the WNBA, that's not the case. Last season in the WNBA, the highest amount teams could spend in the salary cap was $1.34 million. The teams in the league had to create their squads with this budget. The amount determined for the 2022-23 season in the NBA is $156.98 million. On an individual basis, the maximum contract that teams can pay their players in the WNBA is $221,450. While in the NBA, this amount is about $50 million. Enhancement of the revenue-sharing model between the WNBA and NBA would put more money in WNBA players' pockets, which is something that Plum and others would like to see happen sooner rather than later. Sports commentator Jason Whitlock bluntly explains why no one watches the WNBA following Natalie Portman's comments about men not watching women's sports. Portman spoke about her activism when it comes to women's sports while promoting Thor, Love and Thunder in an interview with Variety. Speaking specifically to pay equally, Portman told the outlet, it's rare to have this side-by-side -side comparison where people are doing exactly the same thing and have the same employer and that their success is objective. You can see who wins the World Cup, who doesn't win, how many games, how many goals. It's quite statistically objective, she said. 
from there, she recalled her son watching the Women's World Cup in 2015 saying, I kind of had this assumption that as soon as he realized it was women playing, he wasn't going to be interested. And it was no difference. A kid who loves the sport just wants to see great players. She then declared, There's been an assumption my whole life that I'd be interested in watching men's basketball, men's baseball, men's football and soccer. And I do. I love watching great players play a sport. Why would a man not watch it because it's women? Whitlock answered Portman's question when it came to the WNBA. He explained, The WNBA is a charity organization. It's Big Brother's Big Sisters. The average worker at Big Brother's Big Sisters doesn't make $220,000. It's a charity. They probably make forty dollars or $50,000. And it's not because men are sexist scum. And if, if we had started ba women's basketball in 1946 or whatever, or whenever the NBA launched, the WNBA would be more popular. The skills aren't the same. No one wants to see Brittany Griner play basketball because it doesn't look as beautiful and it's not as skilled as when LeBron James plays basketball. That's a fact. According to CNBC, ESPN reported that Game 4 of the WNBA Finals in 2021 only saw 417,000 people tune in to watch the Chicago Sky defeat the Phoenix Mercury and claim their first WNBA championship. The four-game series reportedly averaged 548,000 viewers with Game 3 attracting the most viewers with 524,000. Forbes reported the NBA Finals between the Golden State Warriors and Boston Celtics averaged 12.4 million viewers with Game 3 being the least watched with 11.5 million viewers and Game 6 being the most watched with 15 million viewers. YouTuber Gideon has reportedly been banned from all NBA-related events, following a series of pranks he pulled while sitting courtside at WNBA games. Attending a Los Angeles Sparks game this week, Adams, dressed head-to-toe in pajamas, occupied several courtside seats and pretended to sleep. His YouTube video shows that when he's first given a warning by security, he lies that he has a medical condition that requires him to sleep, an attempt at comedy akin to something a teenager might do. Shortly after this, he's removed by multiple security guards. Outside the arena, Adams films the security personnel as one guard tells him, you're not allowed to be on the premises. When Adams asks if he's only banned from WNBA games, the security guard specifies that he's banned from all NBA-related events. The NBA hasn't publicly commented on the matter, nor did the league immediately respond to a request for comment from Jezebel to confirm whether or not the shock jock YouTuber has actually been banned. A little before that, at a Minnesota Lynx game, Adams also sat courtside and pulled the same thing. His YouTube video shows that when a ball flies out of bounds toward him, instead of returning the ball as required, he attempts a shot and woefully misses as several players near him appear visibly frustrated. His prank was probably the highlight of the season. This pay disparity is not because of gender, it is because of viewership and entertainment value. It would be nice if WNBA players didn't feel the need to play overseas to supplement a minimum salary of $60,000 which is nothing to squeeze at for a part-time job, but sexism and equity have nothing to do with any of this. You can't just throw hundreds of millions of dollars into a supercharged marketing scheme and expect the WNBA to approach the NBA's popularity. That goes double when the WNBA tries much harder than the NBA to alienate as many potential viewers as possible. Perhaps if the league wants to increase its viewership, it should start by addressing that problem, not by relying on establishment media whining to agitate for bigger salaries. Hope you enjoyed the video. What do you think about the WNBA? Let me know in the comments section. Oh, and don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel for more amazing NBA content.